Okay, we're ready to begin all set, everybody. Yep, thank you. And you all can hear me fine, right? Perfectly. Okay, thank you. Okay, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace and good evening, everyone. You're joining us for our Meet the Candidates event. It is being brought to you by the Islamic Center of Naperville School District Engagement Committee. My name is Saima Shah, and I will be your moderator today. And I would like to welcome uh, our 308 school district um, school board candidates and the parents who are viewing this. So supposed to be viewing this on, on YouTube live, but we're recording it. Um, and our, our committee's vision is that uh, parents, students, and community members engage with local um, school districts to represent our community and advocate for our rights to culturally responsive education. Muslim students are treated with equity and inclusion in the school system. Our mission statement is to advance ICN community's vision of representation in local school districts by increasing awareness and participation in the school district's diversity outreach programs. Um, this district um, engagement committee partners with uh, school districts 203, 204, um, and 308 Oswego school districts. And we seek to develop partnerships in an effort to ensure equity and inclusion within these environments. And if we're truly, and if we truly want our voices to be heard, it is imperative that we step up as a community and reciprocate. Um, in this regard, the school district engagement committee has hosted several um, events in the past few years, and we will continue to do so, God willing. I will begin the program with a simple short prayer from chapter 20 of the Quran, verse 114, which says, Rabbi zidni ilma, literally three little words, uh, which mean, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And Islam is a proponent of uh, education and encourages everyone to learn and seek knowledge. This goes beyond just IQ. It's asking God for personal growth, uh, which could include knowledge to grow spiritually, intellectually, or financially. The Islamic Center of Naperville serves over 5,000 families from various school districts. ICN is a nonpartisan, not-for-profit organization that does not support or oppose any candidate. Our goal is to educate ICN community about the local elections and provide the opportunity to get to know the candidates who are running to represent them on school boards for uh, District 308 in this case. Uh, we also aim to build bridges between the ICN community and the school boards to highlight the unique needs of the ICN community and help find a way to best support the school boards and as administrations to achieve what's best for all students. Um, local elections have the most impact in our lives and the lives of our children. We hope that the parents have a plan on how to vote and for whom to vote, and uh, especially after this informative uh, forum. And then the parents can also, also watch this later on YouTube. Hopefully we'll post it, the recording there. And uh, parents do share this with your family and friends and help spread the awareness about the importance of your local elections. On behalf of ICN and SDEC, we would like to thank all the candidates for taking the time out of their busy schedule to engage with the ICN community. This year, District 308 has four seats, am I right? And we have nine candidates running for this position. Today, we have five uh, in the room. Thank you so much. Now, I quickly wanna go over some housekeeping rules for the candidates. The first round is going to be of introductions. Uh, we'll go in alphabetical order of your first names and each candidate will give their intro and each of you will get two minutes for that. And the, uh, the timer, can you see the timer on the screen? Up top, yes. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, we request that all um, candidates be very respectful of this and not go over their time. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Rahman. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, no, sir, yes, I can hear you. Yes, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, um, sure. Just wanted so to check how things are going, so hopefully everything is fine. Yes, everything is fine except for the live streaming. I think 
there might yeah. be a glitch there. Abhra is working on that. Um, hopefully, we will get that done. So you can record the session and then you can keep going. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm recording. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, dear candidates, round two will be the first question asked of all the candidates. And this time we will go in the descending alphabetical order of the first names. Um, each candidate will again get uh, two minutes for this question. And in the third round, we will ask the second question. And this time we will have the first. Um, first, let's see, we have five candidates, so three candidates. Actually, you know what? Uh, I was keeping time for. Uh, eight, nine of you. So let's let's all um, do round two and three um, and four as well. So we'll ask the questions and then each of you will be getting two minutes each for those questions. So there'll be three questions in total and the last fifth round will be one minute each for your closing statement. Does that sound good? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and of course, a reminder again that everybody please be cognizant of the time that each of you have. Um, okay, so round one. Intros uh, for two minutes each candidate. Um, Amy's here, so we will start with that. Please go ahead. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Um, Thank you to the Islamic Center of Naperville for having all the candidates uh, today uh, to hear from the candidates from School District three, for th School District 308 School Board, uh, a very important election. My name is Dr. Amy Murillo. I, uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a longtime school district resident uh, of almost 19 years. We have four girls who, uh, one proud graduate of Oswego High School, uh, two girls who attend Oswego High School now, uh, and then another daughter at Trauber Junior High. I also, um, my husband is a Mexican immigrant, so I have a very bilingual, bicultural household, and that has really impacted the way that I view education as well as my work in education. I'm an educator by profession. Uh, I spent 20 years in public schools, 12 of those actually in School District 308 uh, as a classroom teacher, uh, a department chair, and then I spent five years at Yorkville High School as a high school administrator. I also have a doctorate in education uh, from Lewis University. My experience is one of the reasons that I'm running for school board. I feel like schools have a lot of challenges they are tackling, uh, and my knowledge and expertise in these areas uh, can really help move us forward in School District 308. And then the other reason I'm running for school board is because I believe in um, quality uh, public schools and that public schools are a public good and should be protected as public goods, that they should serve all students and not just individual platforms or individual uh, agendas. And so for that reason, uh, as a future board member, I intend to uh, protect our public schools and also improve our public schools so all students have the best educational experience possible. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, let's get that started. Hmm. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Dominic. Hello. Uh, yeah, this is Dominic Soro. Uh, again, uh, to repeat what Amy said, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Um, thank you for hosting today's forum. Um, I've, uh, I'm running for school board. I'm currently a school board member. I was appointed in February 2022. Um, Prior to that and during that, I've been uh, on the Teaching and Learning Advisory Committee, uh, the Finance and Operations Advisory Committee for the district, um, the Diversity and Equity Advisory Committee. Uh, I was vice president for Bilingual Parent Advisory Council, as well as vice, vice president of the Partners in Talented and Gifted Education. Um, outside of uh, school district volunteer and uh, committee work, I've, I've been a uh, 
um, commissioner for the Oswego Planning and Zoning Commission uh, under two different, uh, two very different uh, village presidents. Uh, so I work well with a lot of people. Um, and I was a uh, original treasurer for the Kiwanis uh, of Oswego, uh, amongst other things. So I have a, a, a very broad skill set and very broad engagement, um, respect for for every student in the district. Um, I have uh, 20 plus years in corporate treasury where I've worked for two Fortune 500 companies in a hospital system, a nonprofit hospital system, uh, where I deal with liquidity management, debt, uh, investments, operational efficiencies. So uh, I believe those the combination of my engagement over the past 12 years in the community and the school district, as well as the uh, my work experience, has served me well since I was on the, since I've been appointed to the board, and I have talked to thousands of people over the years, so I get a good sense of what's important to Oswego, um, and I uh, uh, hope to have four more years to deliver on that. So. Thank and you I so don't much. see, maybe I'm the only one that doesn't see um, the timer, but, uh, and that's okay. Oh. I just figured I'd let you, I see, yeah. I see the recording countdown. Oh, you know what? Do you see it now? I see something popping up now. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. okay. I do not. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic, for speaking up. Yes. yes. No, I, yeah, I figured you'd probably want to know in case, uh, you know, somebody's oh. talking, talking, talk. <laughs> yes, so. that's perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, next up. We have Jared. Go ahead, Jared. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for putting this on. I was on the board previously from 2015 to 2019. And I remember the hospitality at the Islamic Center of Naperville, uh, lots of good food, and even walked away with a book uh, from one of um, uh, one of the teachers, uh, I believe, who was teaching at Plano at the time. So, uh, missed the uh, in-person hospitality, but thank you for doing this. So, I was previously on the board from 2015 to 2019. I was just uh, appointed again in April 2022. Uh, I've served on multiple DEI commit committees in multiple districts. Um, I have been I've been on the teaching and learning committee in um, uh, 308 from 2015 to 2022. I am a master board member certified by Illinois Association of School Boards. Uh, I am a, an educator uh, 17 years in the middle school and high school level. Uh, I have taught students. Who, um, I teach in Bolingbrook and I have students uh, who I know um, have uh, uh, part of the Islamic uh, Center of Neighborville. Uh, I'm a 13 year uh, basketball coach as well, uh, recognized by the state 4 times as a, um, by the Illinois basketball coach association, um, as a coach of the year, I started the father's forum at long beach elementary, uh, where I. Volunteered when my oldest son. Was in school there, I have 2 sons, um, oldest is 23 and youngest is a, a sophomore at Oswego East. I even have a grandson. I have served on multiple curriculum committees uh, over the course of my my time. I serve uh, in Aurora on the GAR Museum as a commissioner. I've served on many IESA, which is state level for um, scholastic and um, 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 sports activities at the state level at the junior high middle school level. Thank you. Next up, Kevin, please. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Kevin Johnson. I thank the Islamic Center of Naperville for inviting me to this event. Um, I'm a senior executive of IT for a Fortune 500 company. I joined the diversity and inclusion team of that company of 80,000 employees probably about two and a half years ago. And during that time period, I've been responsible for just the overall fellowship between the um, both the western and eastern sections of the company and one of the things that i'm very proud of that i brought to the company 10 years ago when we we're in a recessionary period and the company decided to utilize 
um, additional resources throughout the globe. I created that partnership with all resources within the team and created that family atmosphere. As well as I went to those countries to learn the culture and the spirituality. And I've learned quite many things and built relationships with individuals in those other countries as well. And I look forward to utilizing my skills, being an executive for 17 years, uh, handling budgets and bringing teams together throughout the globe and making sure they all work together and, are, and work side by side without any animosity and or prejudice. Got much experience with that and I look to bring that to the board as well. Thank you. Thank you. And then Mary Jo, thank you for waiting patiently. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to the Islamic Cultural Center for having us this evening. Uh, my name is Mary Jo Wenmuth. I have 35 years, more than 35 years in the financial services industry, where I served as both a financial planner and also for part of that time as a financial principal. All of that to say that I have a good working knowledge of numbers, how budgets work, and I also have a good relationship of working with people um, in my 35 years plus. I'm a four year Oswego resident, so I'm fairly new to the community. My kids are grown. I have five kids. I have also have six grandkids, uh, but I have put five kids through public school systems. Three of the kids, three of my kids were um, adopted from the foster care system. So I have another good working knowledge of, um, of IEPs and in general, just having to advocate for my kids. Uh, the reason that I'm running is that along that line, I'm a fierce advocate for kids. Um, I really truly believe that all kids deserve an equal opportunity at education. I feel that each kid who is, and I, and I keep saying kid, I should say student, each child um, deserves that opportunity and each child comes with unique skills, with a unique skill set. Um, and it's, it's unique to every single individual. Because of that, one size fits all for education just doesn't work. It's the goal of the school district or, or public schools in general to raise each child to the maximum level that they're capable of, of attaining. And to that extent, I really would like to work with the other board members and work with teachers, the admin and students in order to accomplish those goals. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so round one is up. We're gonna move on. Uh, to our first question, and then we'll, we're going to go in the opposite alphabetical order um, this time with first names. And the question is, and then we'll start with Mary Jo again, okay? And then two, you, and you, and then uh, a two-minute answer, please. So. How would you work on current school policies to ensure students from different race, ethnic, and religious backgrounds feel safe, included, and celebrated, especially along the lines of non-biased curriculum and diverse staff that reflect them? Thank you. Uh, there are a couple ways that I think that uh, that I know that I would handle it. First of all, uh, diversity needs to be Diversity and inclusion in general needs to be part of our everyday curriculum. Uh, just as I said before, each child is unique. Uh, each child comes from, from a unique background and that includes culturally as well. Uh, our school district is only 45, or excuse me, 49% Caucasian, which means that a little bit more than half are, are people of other cultures. And I think we need, it would be irresponsible of us not to embrace that. Uh, we can learn so much from other cultures back and forth. Um, to the extent that we have teachers included in the program that are more representative, that would be great. That becomes a little bit of a challenge because statistically, 
Um, there are some statistical challenges to hiring people of different ethnic cultures. They're, they're just not necessarily uh, as many of them as there are, but I think that we need to make the effort in order to include teachers of, of different cultures. Uh, I also think that our curriculum should reflect we're in the process or the board is in the process of updating some of the curriculum now, including uh, some of their history books. I think it's important to include different cultures in that as well. Uh, I think the more, you know, fear is a big factor. So I think to the extent that everyone can learn more about who their neighbors are, who their classmates are, et cetera, and you can remove that fear barrier, barrier then you can incorporate a sense of safety and a better position for kids to learn in general. So it's a, it's a long-term project, but definitely something that I would absolutely be in favor of. Thank you. Thank you. Same question for you, Kevin. Yes, thank you. Not being a current member of the board and running for candidacy, I would share my experiences with current members of the board, what I've gone through in my life in dealing with prejudice and not being included. I would also share experiences that I've went through in the workplace and advocating for those that could not advocate for themselves. So I would definitely share my experiences with current board members and gain understanding from what they've experienced within the school system as well. It's very important as we're looking to hire a new superintendent to make sure that he possesses the qualities required going forward to aid that effort. Thank you. Thank you. Jared. Well, as you know, we've uh, had a lot of work done from many of our community members when it comes to diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And and uh, we need to continue to look at that DEI lens and look at through things, uh, look through, uh, look at various aspects of our district through that lens. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, the board um, made that a commitment to uh, create that as a board committee that I serve on, uh, and obviously I've been supportive of and. We have been able to look at various aspects of the district through that lens, which has helped policy. And we will continue to look at policy. And we've continued to uh, this one of the reasons we look for student voice. And we have students uh, on the um, uh, the board as uh, as as advocates for our for our students. Other districts are looking at what we're doing. We also have we also have to celebrate our communities. Uh, the ninth ward of Aurora was ranked as a place for a destination uh, for young millennials and young young couples who are coming to start families, and and that's a very diverse area. And the district will continue to uh, diversify in a positive way, and and we need to embrace that. I know um, I'm not trying to steal Dr. Murillo's thunder, but she always talks about the pipeline, so I'm going to try and be quiet about that. But as the as the district does diversify that uh, we need to make sure that we have uh, we're looking at our 308 uh, students as future educators as well. And so that's also something that we want to uh, include looking at our various uh, stakeholders when it comes to curriculum and having them at the at the table and hearing all voices as well, I think is is an important piece to this as well. And uh, and thank you for for your work on all of this too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dominic. So, as a, yeah, as a court current board member, um, pretty much since the day I started, uh, I've been very big on diversifying our staff, making attempts, uh, going above and beyond. Um, it's not something that has to cost more. It's just we have to recruit differently. We have to go uh, to where the graduates are, to where the employees are. Um, and in response to that, um, our HR group has worked more closely with our uh, director of diversity and equity, um, developing literature, developing methods to do that. Uh, this is, um, uh, I know that it impacts just organizations. It's, it makes organizations better. It makes student achievement better. It makes, it's not just for the student, um, uh, 
you know, uh, the student of diverse cultures, it's every student um, benefits from that. So it's, it's something that um, is very important to me and a stress forever. Uh, as far as curriculum, um, because we've had such a, uh, a focus on diversity and equity, we want to make sure that any new curriculum that we're proposing or that, it, yeah, that's proposing um, and implemented uh, takes into consideration um, uh, in images and in writing uh, diverse cultures and limiting stereotypes. We're also integrating social emotional learning as well as how um, easy it is to uh, use for students with IEPs. So we're definitely um, incorporating diversity and equity into um, hiring practices. I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, seeing those bear fruit because this is something that uh, uh, they've talked about recently as something that uh, is upon almost implemented. And uh, then, you know, I'm looking forward to going through curriculum review and re renewing that process and, and uh, just keep the momentum. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for waiting, Amy. Thank you. Um, I've often said as an educator and in my work that equity and cultural responsiveness can't be like a checklist of things we do. It really needs to be, as Jared mentioned, the word lens, a lens through which we see all of our work uh, because it should touch every part uh, of our work and it will never be done, right? It's always a work in progress. Um, so some of those lenses, I think that we need to consider have been mentioned, uh, but I'll re-mention them, um, you know, regularly reviewing policies uh, at the board level to make sure that they're equitable and not discriminatory. Uh, looking at curriculum reviews, uh, as Dominic mentioned, to ensure diverse perspectives, uh, as well as representations of the students uh, in our classrooms. Recruiting and retaining uh, teachers and staff from diverse backgrounds is also very important. Um, we need to develop local pipelines, partner with um, colleges, universities, even our high schools, even organizations uh, like yours uh, to, um, to build those local pipelines uh, of people interested in the field of education. Uh, and we need to look at data through the lens of equity uh, and cultural responsiveness and aggregate that data uh, to look at certain groups to make sure that all groups uh, are served, uh, are having the best educational experience possible. Uh, and then lastly, we need to model that from the top down. So um, the superintendent search is very important that we have someone that also views equity and culturally responsiveness not as a checklist, uh, but a lens through which they see uh, the work that they'll do in the district. Uh, and then the Board of Education needs to use uh, that lens as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, I should have mentioned that earlier. I've, I'm a teacher myself for 25 plus years. Um, I moved into the Oswego area 16 years back and I've been part of the diversity committee from the day it started. So about almost, I would say 13, 14 years back, if, if not more. And uh, so, yeah, I am uh, kind of, um, I've been in it um, from the very beginning. Okay, so Thank our you. next round, <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. And yeah, we're, we're making, I would say 14 years, we're making baby steps. Um, in the right direction, but uh, um, lots more conversations um, and steps. I do gr get frustrated with the red tape, though, because uh, yeah, that really just hinders. <laughs> and of course, it has to be there, but it really, really hinders the, the actual action steps that can be taken. OK, next round, next question. It's, it's a similar question. Uh, and then this time we'll go um, in the opposite, starting with Amy. Um, and then two minutes again for this. It's a similar question about the curriculum, but it's very specific because unfortunately this does happen in the school. Um, and so what measures would you take to ensure the curriculum that is selected does not feed into 
the implicit bias against marginalized communities. Because that is the reality on, on the ground, unfortunately. Amy? Yeah, thank you. Uh, super important work. So I'll mention a couple different things. One I've already mentioned is through that curriculum review process, it will be important that, you know, the lens of diversity, equity, and cultural responsiveness uh, is, is applied. Uh, but then we also need to provide um, training and education for our, um, our, our educators who are developing that curriculum uh, so that they can recognize um, their own biases as well as biases that might be presented in curriculum uh, and they can kind of combat that uh, from the start uh, while they're developing curriculum. Uh, and then when in the classroom, I think it'll be important to listen to the voices of our students uh, and as ish and parents and as issues arise or things are brought to light. Uh, we want our students to feel comfortable in bringing and parents to feel comfortable bringing those uh, issues to light. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, so that if that curriculum is being Im implemented in a way uh, that enhances bias in some way, we can kind of regroup as educators uh, and think about a path forward. Um, again, I'll say that this is a lifelong project. Uh, it is not something, uh, it's definitely something that we can um, combat and, and work uh, on, uh, but we're always going to have to have that lens. Uh, our communities are constantly changing. Uh, biases change and develop over time. Uh, and so to have some of those structural piece, pieces in place, as well as the professional development, as well as responses in place for when things are brought to light that might be, um, you know, um, through a biased uh, lens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Same question for you, Dominic. As a non-educator, um, I definitely trust our, our teachers and staff but I do understand that our the diversity at our schools aren't isn't very high. Um, so um, I know that we bring in our you know community from uh, our population of EL teachers, our population of special education teachers, um, the, the curriculum, uh, the experts at that particular curriculum. Um, but you bring up a good point, and I want to make sure that um, the heroes aren't always white, and the heroes aren't always men. Um, so we, we, uh, need to probably, um, consider not just having a DEI director, um, and somebody that can be part of those teams, somebody that can offset, um, and do some of that work, uh, besides the DEI director. Um, so, um, thank you for that question. Um, it gives me a lot to think about, um. But it is something that I definitely want to tackle and make sure that uh, uh, curriculum, uh, old curriculum is, if that is an issue, that we prioritize that um, new curriculum, uh, that we eliminate that. So, or prioritize the replacement of that curriculum, maybe I should say. So. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure that I'm not. Oh, Jared. Yeah, thank you. You know, one of my most proud moments as um, an educator was watching my son at Oswego East running cross country, and there was uh, AQSA school out of Bridgeview, and there was a former student of mine. Um, I guess I should call her Miss O'Day, uh, and. We got to talking and 1 of the things that uh, I actually wanted to know, I wanted to self reflect upon was what, what was it that that made, you know, my classroom uh, a place where it was more welcoming and so forth. And as we got to talk educator to educator, 1 of the things that came out was that the classroom was very inquiry based. Where students felt uh, at ease asking questions uh, where students were able to have conversations that sometimes uh, were difficult ones, but necessary ones. And it was interesting to me that out of uh, a student uh, one year, when we talked about worlds colliding, the old world and, new, and the new world uh, in my history class, we started with Mansa Musa, right? 
um, that's that was the beginning that we started with instead of perhaps maybe, uh, you know, 1490, you know, the Christopher Columbus coming over, if you will. And it was because a student was questioning, had a question, right? And and so it was my job as an educator to kind of answer the question, but not directly, but in a way that the student was allowed to inquire further. And so I really think that as our curriculum develops into more inquiry based, there's a student voice piece, but I think it's also more rewarding for the educator uh, and the student alike. Thank you. Same question for Kevin. Thank you. So I think back throughout my educational career, I've always sought the truth in the history of this country. Unfortunately, I've had to go outside of the educational system to do so. So one of the things I would advocate as being a member of the board is making sure that the superintendent chosen understood the importance of each and every individual within this history to understand its history as well as her world history, its truth. Um, in looking at candidates within the diversity culture within the company, we stress vulnerability. Um, with it within each segment, just speaking, having real talk with the employees. So I would stress and advocate that within the student board as well as with the students, teachers, and faculty. Understanding, and I know the reality of the situation, the staff is 90 plus percent one demographic. And that's something that uh, they've been working on for quite some time, as you know. And I believe that there are ways to expedite that. I've done that within my teams, utilizing methods of vulnerability and making sure that the folks that interview the candidates that come in have that vulnerability and making sure they understand the importance of diversity as one of the questions and having real talk with folks as they come in. It's the only way to solve the problem is to have real talk and teach truth. So that, that's what I would advocate for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Mary Jo. Please. Mm -hmm. So I would also look at this from a, from a two prong approach. Um, again, like Dominic, I'm not an educator. What I would do would be to, first of all, the first line of, of uh, approval, I think should be in the hands of the teachers, because again, they are the professionals. Um, they would have a better uh, feel for the, uh, for the material that was in the books with the focus on, uh, with certainly with a focus on diversity. I think once it gets past that teacher committee uh, or whatever group, if you will, then I think it is incumbent upon the board to make sure and to have uh, standards in place where we are reviewing it from a, um, from a diversity level. Uh, from the other standpoint, I think it also needs to start from the top down as well. And with that, I think, you know, we need to get the new superintendent in place. He or she needs to be very forward looking, needs to be able to uh, encompass and, and welcome different cultures and to, um, uh, to spread to all of their, you know, to all of his or her staff. Uh, the fact that we need to we need to embrace all of these all of these different cultures, uh, we need to include them in our in our everyday learning. Again, a lot of hate stems from fear, and fear is is solved by knowledge. So if we can teach everybody, teach each other about each other, then we get a level of understanding. We open up lines of communication, um, and I think that does nothing more than. Um, then level up uh, the education and the understanding of each other. Thank you. Okay, our next round, our next question, and we'll go back in the alphabetical order, starting with Mary Jo again this time. And our question is, what are some of the measures you will take to advance equity among the special needs population, both academically and socially? Mary Jo? 
special needs is one of the areas that is currently the most the most needy uh, needs the most reinforcement from a teacher level uh, but just because a child is special needs whether it be social emotional physical uh, what uh, socioeconomic um, it doesn't take away the fact that that it's a that it's a child and that child deserves an education so Again, whether they're special needs or not, I think what we need to do is we need to recognize what the child's needs are and respond to them accordingly. Um, if that's giving them more, um, more of a, a background in different cultures so, they, so that they have more of a respect level for that culture, then so be it. Um, if we need to recognize something of a cultural nature that's that is relative to just a particular culture, I think we re need to recognize that too. Again, our goal is to make kids comfortable in a learning environment, which then allows them to learn better, which then then ultimately has them realize their full potential. And again, that's what education in my mind is all about. And I think that needs to be promoted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then Kevin. Thank you. Being a leader of people and uh, being vulnerable enough to understand my limitations. This is an area of weakness for me. So I would reach out to those that are more knowledgeable than I. To begin to truly understand the situation. And lean on that guidance to make the right decisions. As well as ensuring after building that knowledge, making sure that the superintendent chosen encompasses that knowledge as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jared. Well, thank you for asking this question as a parent of a child who had an IEP and another child who has a 504. I'm really appreciative that you asked this question. First of all, it's going to take resources. And uh, before I was a teacher, I spent 20 years in the private sector. And one thing that concerns me is when I hear uh, candidates who are talking about limiting or cutting resources coming into the school system. And I encourage all voters to really pay attention to that language that's being used. Because what happens is when those resources are cut, our most vulnerable end up um, feeling the, the brunt of that. And why, what happened before when that occurred, um, tragically, when that same kind of language was used in the past, our students with IEPs suffered. And one of the things that I wanted to do uh, when we had no plan, when, um, when we took over the co-op before uh, I was on the board, was I wanted a coordinator in our building. I wanted a coordinator per building. And the reason why is because I wanted our students, all of our students, to be a part of the culture of each building. And I also believe that by doing so, that would limit the movement of students if we ever had to and when we ever have to re redo the rezone or redo the boundaries inside our district. And what happened was we didn't have the resources to to do things that way. Now I fought against it. Uh, I lost. I lost that fight. Uh, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I still say the same thing to this day. If those resources had been there, we would have been able to go down that road. And and the special education director that left agreed, but we couldn't because we didn't have the resources. So be very careful with candidates who are coming in saying they're going to cut resources because of private sector experience. I bring an education experience. Thank you. Dominic? Can I ask you to repeat the question? Of course. What are some of the measures you will take to advance equity among the special needs population, both academically and socially? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, as you're, as you're saying, it's, it's, um, it's resources, I believe that right now. Um, what we have are overworked teachers, so um, putting more um, of that work on them is 
is definitely a stressor. So we can um, provide better care and better services um, behaviorally, socially, academically um, by shoring that up and, and getting kids the services and the resources they need uh, when they need it. So this, that requires um, resources, that requires prioritization. That's something that actually I'm <laughs> kind of running on is um, um, creating a, a system where um, the earlier you're servicing a child, um, the more beneficial it is to that child and the more financially stable, it, it, it provides more financial stability because it's also the time when you have to um, provide the lowest amount of resources. That doesn't mean that that child isn't going to need uh, help for a very long time, but it might be less than it was. So I'm looking at um, helping kids now and uh, so that they can succeed academically, emotionally, behaviorally, um, and now into the future and create a more financially stable district. Um, I also believe that that helps the teaching culture, that helps the classroom, that helps the building. Um, a lot of times behavior and academics are highly correlated. Um, so I, I really want to get that under control. Um, and I think that, yeah, basically the key to financial stability is better academics, um, which <laughs> some people might not um, kind of see that, but that's how I look at it, so. So in regards to the, the special needs population and equitable measures, I'll mention a couple things that I've already mentioned because I think it applies to special needs, but one is through that curriculum review cycle, uh, really uh, ensuring that the materials and the curriculum that's provided has easy ways for educators to differentiate uh, curriculum and activities for our special needs students, which was one of the main um, you know, instructional techniques uh, that we can do at the classroom level to ensure all students are gaining access to, uh, you know, academic content. Um, secondly, again, the pipeline of um, to make sure that we have equitable experiences, we need special education to have uh, highly qualified professionals um, and teacher assistants and educators uh, in the classroom. Uh, and that requires us uh, to build these local pipelines and recruit and retain uh, those teachers. Our teachers right now are, are doing a great job, but special education has been a shortage. Uh, there's been a shortage of teachers since I've been a teacher, since I went into education. And so uh, we always need to keep our, 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 our eye on the prize with that to make sure that our students have the most, um, have the, the staff that they need uh, to work with in their classrooms. Uh, and then third, in regard to equitable measures, I'm really interested in seeing and, and looking and digging into the data for our special education students uh, with student outcomes, um, but more than just the state data in regards to student outcomes, I want to look at um, GPA. I want to look at how many of our special education students are involved in an extracurricular activity. Uh, what do those behavioral referrals look like for those students? So that really, really get a robust picture of that experience and we can see if there are inequities that we can plug into uh, to provide resources. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize uh, to Dominic and Amy. I was on mute. I thanked uh, Dominic and then said, Amy, you're, you're, the mic is yours. I'm so sorry. When I saw your blank look, I, I realized I'm like, ooh, I'm. <laughs> I saw the clock going, so I just went Yeah, through. yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So now it's the, the last round. And initially I did say that your closing statement will be for one minute each, but since there are fewer of you and we have the time, um, let's, let's do it for two. Um, is that okay with everybody? Perfect. And then um, let's start with Amy and then go in alphabetical order um, and do your closing statement for two minutes each. Thank you. Amy? Yeah, thank you. Um, so in closing, uh, a really important election. I think the uh, fate of our public schools are, are really riding on this uh, election. Uh, and um, I encourage everyone to be informed about all their options uh, regarding the four seats that, that are open on the board. Uh, as far as my candidacy, uh, I bring a wealth of experience and expertise in, in the field of education. 
Um, I'm an advocate uh, for all students. Uh, I really model collaboration um, and positivity uh, around the field of education and for our students and enthusiasm for our students. Um, and I'm a strong supporter of really strong quality uh, public schools. Um, I'll end by saying, you know, I don't, I do have some experience. I don't have all the answers and I don't think anyone on the, on the, on the call would say that they have all the answers, but I really think by coming together as a community, uh, we can make a really strong path forward uh, for Oswego School District 308. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll go to Dominic. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, we don't all have the answers. Um, but um, as far as an advocate goes, uh, I am somebody that, uh, like I said, from day one, uh, even I was on the bilingual uh, parent advisory council. I was on the English learners task force. This is, um, I, I, I really strive um, to do what's best for society. Um, I mean, I, I look for justice. Um, one of the first events that I attended happened to be um, the Muslim student association dinner where they talked about social justice and, um, you know, it made me smile. Uh, they, they brought up, uh, there was a, um, a speaker there and she was a lawyer. She was very young. Um, she was kind of giving just take baby steps, you know, start off uh, changing the world little by little and you'll make a great impact and uh, it was very inspiring. Uh, I wish I was there during the presentation time, but I happen to have a doctor appointment, but um, uh, I'm getting chills just thinking about it now. That was such a great event. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've gone to um, mosaic events world. Um, uh, world representative events, you know, where, where you're going to different cultures and um, I, I, I seek those out. It's um, so I, I truly want us to be better as a school district, um, better representation, better organizational impact. Um, and uh, it just will make for better citizens. So I really uh, appreciate this. Yeah, the elections, April 4th. Uh, there's early voting going on, uh, but March 20th is when um, it's more widely available. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for having us today. Thank you. Um, Jared. Thank you again for doing this and uh, this election is very important and and here's something exciting, right? Uh, we're going to. We're going to put 2 brand new people on the board, no matter what happens at least. Right? And that's a good thing. We do need some change. However, uh, I do want to say this, that it is also important to have somebody on the board. With some historical context with some background on what has happened in the district from the past. And who's been there, who's voted, who's been a part of these conversations. Who's been uh, dealing with all of these issues who's aware. Right, coming into this, that you were on the DEI uh, piece for years and involved. Who has that knowledge, right? And I'm I'm the only candidate who can provide that. Uh, and and if elected, uh, I will have the most experience of any board member on that board. And uh, without uh, myself or 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 Mr. Cerrone, the entire board would have a collective experience of six years between seven members. That's that's a dangerous place to be. So this election does mean a lot. As an educator, I taught at a middle school that ranked as an exemplary school. And uh, so much so that I was encouraged to make that jump to the high school. So I'm not afraid of change. I'm not afraid of having difficult conversations. I'm not uh, afraid of doing what needs to get done. Uh, and, and and I excel at, at, at what, I, what needs to be done. I do have private se sector uh, experience before I was an educator. Uh, teacher is my second career, and uh, I have lots of experiences that I want to continue to take uh, to the board for the next couple of years. Um, and I'm excited about the change, but we also need consistency. You can vote now. Uh, early voting expands March 20th, April 4th. Please vote. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, thank you. First of all, once again, thank you for inviting me to this event. I've enjoyed it immensely. 
One of the things I do is lead with love. This community should be proud of the candidates that they have in front of them. I would tell you, being an executive of a $14 billion company, that people are its number one asset. It would be ignorant to think that the education system is not a business as well. It has two elements. One of the things I can bring is the opportunity to make sure that the budget long term supports these programs that are so desperately needed. So know that I care about my people, number one. And I make sure that anything that I do benefits them. So I would bring that experience to the Board of Education for 308. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Jo. Thank you, and, and again, thank you for having us this evening. We really do appreciate it. Um, as has been said several times, this is a really important election. Um, as Jared mentioned, there'll be two new people on the board at, at the very least. Uh, I certainly would like to be one of them. Uh, again, I'll reiterate, I do have 35 years of, of financial planning, but, but truly more so than that, from my perspective, um, it's about the kids. And we need to keep the kids in mind. We need to support children and give them the resources that they need. Uh, we need to be responsible in doing that. Uh, we need to look at, as the adults, uh, we need to look at other factors like the budget, like you know the superintendent again, whoever he or she may be. Um, we need to keep all of those things in mind, but but it's ultimately all about the kids. And the reason it is is because they are going to be our new leaders, and it's incumbent on us to educate our new leaders. Not only just to educate them, but understand that the world is changing. The world is becoming smaller smaller every day through technology. So we have to come together and we have to we have to understand each other and we have to appreciate each other. And I think that's what I would advocate for. Um, again, advocate for kids, willing to work with people. Um, I would be a new fresh face on the board again. I'm I'm four years in Oswego, but five kids through the public school system. Uh, the important thing is you do your research, you vote with who you feel will do the best job for you. Certainly that's what that's what voting is about. And um, above all, please just remember to vote. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I would uh, at this point like to close and I'm excited finishing a little bit earlier. Hopefully you um, get to, um, you know, call it a night sooner than later. Uh, I was a little nervous with the nine candidates. Um, so there was some, uh, what's it called? Natural selection there. <laughs> um, so I would like to close the event now by thanking all the candidates for giving us your time and allowing us the opportunity to hear your views and your plans for our uh, school district. Thank you very, very much. And which we wish you all the best. And we look forward to working with you in various forums. And then I would also like to thank the audience and uh, we did, we were able to get the YouTube uh, live link. And so we hope that uh, you parents benefited uh, from this program and we will make an, and you will be making an educated decision while casting your vote. Thank you, thank you, thank you again, everybody and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I thought it was gonna be all three school districts in one, in one meeting, so oh. <laughs> I thought there might be twenty people. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, "How's that going to work?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we've been. Uh, yeah. It is very challenging because then our, our team uh, divides up in in three, and uh, I'm the one who represents three o eight, um, and so the, most of them actually are in two o three and two o four, and uh, so we actually uh, do need some volunteers from our own community for the, the this um, forum as well. But thank you so much, everybody. Good yeah, night. Thank you too.